Here's the first way. People usually will tell you think outside of a box, but I will tell you think there is a box. So with that said, let's go ahead and just draw a box right here. And this is going to work really nicely. Because this question now is so much easier, isn't it? So if you see that right here, this is the area. All we have to do is find out the area of the box, which is just going to be from here to here. That's five. From here to here, that's six. So the area of the box is five times six, namely 30. And then minus, well, now we just have to find out the area of the little triangles, the red ones. And then we can use what? One half base times height, yeah? Okay, for this one, this is 5, and from here to here, that's 4. So 5 times 4 is 20, divided by 2 is 10. So the first little one is 10, and then we have to add it with the other one. From here to here is 2, from here to here is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. And then the last one is, this right here is 1, and then this right here is 6. Multiply, divided by 2, we get 3. So all together, we have this. And of course, we can just now work this out. This is 30 minus 17. So altogether, the area is equal to 13, right? So this is right here. It's the first way. And I think some of you guys did this as well, right? For the second way, I will show you guys how you can use matrix and also determinant to find the area of this triangle. Here we go. First, we have to pick a point. Let's say this one. And then you have to find the factor from here to here. Well, the x component of the factor is going to be this minus that which is 7 minus 2 that's 5 and then the y component is just 5 minus 1 so that's 4 all right and then you go the other one so from here to here well the x component is just 3 minus 2 which is 1 and the y component is 7 minus 1 which is 6 like this now we can actually just use determine to figure out the area of this triangle I will tell you the area is equal to you have to multiply by one half because if you just do the determinant well in that case you actually get the area of a parallelogram so you actually get another piece like this but you just want half of it so just multiply by one half that's it all right so what you do next is you can just put this Right here, we have 5, 4, so I will just put this 5, 4, and then you have 1 and 6, so you can just put on 1, 6. And the order doesn't really matter because of the property of the determinant, but let me just do it this way. All right, then you will see that for the determinant right here, just go ahead and do this times this, and this times that, and you subtract. So you get 1 half times the quantity when you do this times that, that's 30. And then you have to minus this times that. Of course, that's just nicely equal to 4, like so. And then, of course, work that out. That's 26 divided by 2. Again, we will end up with 13. So, really cool, huh? Okay, for the third way is for the people who don't like to find the components of the factors. So, here is how we are going to do it. Let me just show you guys the work, right? So here is the area, and I will tell you, we are still going to be using determinant, but it's a three by three situation. Let me show you. First, you still have to have the one half, and then this is going to be a three by three matrix. First, you pick a point, let's say this one, which we have two one, right? And you have to be careful, you have to go counterclockwise. So the next point is actually this one, which is, 7, 5, and then you continue and you get 3, 7, like this, right? So just put the numbers down first, and then what you have to do next is for the third column, just go ahead and put down 1, 1, and 1, and just go ahead and compute the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, and then divide it by 2, and you will be done. And the idea that this works is because this right here is actually to find the volume of a 3D version of the parallelogram, right? So if you can think about it, the height is equal to one, then the volume of that is the same as the area, right? So that's the idea. Anyway, let's go ahead and just do the work. And for a three by three matrix, what you can do is just copy down the first two columns. So I will do that. 
two, seven, three, and then one, five, seven. And what we are going to do is the following. We still have the one half all the way in the front. Open a big parentheses. And then what you have to do is this times this times that. And then you add it with this times this times that. And then this times this times that. And then you add them up. And then you do the other way. And then you subtract, right? So here we go for the first part right here. 2 times 5 is 10 times 1 is still 10. Good. And then you add 1, 1, 3, you multiply, you get 3. And then 1, 7, 7, you get 49. So this is the first part. Then you subtract and you go the other way. For the other way, 1, 7, and 1, you multiply, you get 7. And then 2, 1, and 7, that's going to be 14. And then 1, 5, and 3, you multiply them, you get 15. So that's pretty much the computation. Now you can just work this out. This is one half times. This is 62 minus. This is 36. Work that out. 13. Of course, we know it's 13. Okay, for the fourth one, this is actually really similar to matrix determinant, but it's actually not. This actually has a name as well. This is called the shoeless theorem, right? So this is how it works. And in fact, it works with if you have more points, right? But anyway, let's just do this triangle. It says the area of this triangle is equal to the following. First, you do one half, and then you go ahead and draw two vertical lines like this. And then what you do is you pick a point, and let's say this one first. So we have two, one. Just go ahead and write that down. And again, you go counterclockwise, so you end up with 7, 5. And then you continue, and you have 3, 7. And then the thing right here you have to be careful is, you have to go back to the original, which is 2, 1, like this. And now, this is how you are going to compute it. Compute this thing right here, right? And notice, this, it looks like a matrix. You can look at this as a matrix, 4 by 2, yeah? But the following, it's not the determinant of a 4 by 2 matrix. The determinant of a 4 by 2 matrix doesn't make sense, right? But this is just how this works. And the reason that this is called the shoeless theorem is because you will do this times that, this times that, and this times that. And you add them up. And then you do the other way. So let's do this part first. So 2 times 5 is 10. And then you add 7 times 7, which is 49. And then 3 times 1, which is three so that's the first part yeah then you are going to subtract and you guessed it we go the other way and when you draw all these arrows doesn't this look like the shoeless on your shoes right really cool huh so now let's go ahead one times seven is seven and you add five times that is 15 and then lastly we have 14 like that and let's do all this in our head. And yes, the answer is 13, right? <laughs> so really cool theorem. Okay, I know some of you guys might be tired with all the matrices and also the determinants. So for the last one, I would like to tell you guys about the Pigs theorem. And I'm going to ask you guys to take a guess on why this is called the Pigs theorem, right? Anyway, here is the deal. If you want to find out the area of a polygon whose vertices are lattice points, meaning that the components, they have to be integer values like this, right? Then you do the following. Area will be equal to i plus b over 2 and then minus 1. Well, what exactly is the i? i stands for the number of the lattice points inside. So all we have to do is just go back to the picture and count. So we have this right here, one, two, and this is not, this is on the edge right here, right? So this is not. So we have one, two, and then three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and this is also one, right? So 12, so altogether, the i is equal to 12. And now, the b right here is just going to be the lattice point on the triangle. So here we can see this is 1. You also have to consider the vertex as 1. 
and two, three, four. No, there's no four. Uh, one, two, three, and then this is actually the four. And then that's it, huh? So the B right here is actually four. And then all you have to do next is just go ahead and plug into the formula and then work that out. And without further ado, you can see that this is 12 plus 2 minus 1, which is again 13. And you might be thinking, do we just go to the triangle and pick out the point? That's why it's called the pick theorem. Well, maybe, but no. So let me show you guys the Wikipedia page. And as you can see, uh, it's this person, George Alexander Pick. Yeah. So that's it. Hopefully you guys all like this video. And before you go, be sure to leave a comment down below and let us know which method did you like the most. Also, do you have another method to do this? That's it.